Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be testing out Linux on the all-new Redaxa Rock Pi X. Now, if you're not familiar with this board, I've done a few videos on it. It's a new Intel x86-based single board computer from Redaxa. It has the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi, but it is using an older CPU. It's the Intel Atom Z8350. Now for this video, we'll be adding a heatsink so we can cool that CPU down. It does get quite hot. And I'm going to be running XUbuntu 20.04 with Twister UI. Now, like I mentioned, I have created a couple other videos on this same board here. The first one was running Windows. The second one was running Android. I'll leave a link for those in the description. And there's actually a few different RAM and storage variants of this unit. But I happen to have the one with 4 gigabytes of LPDDR3 and 32 gigabytes of internal eMMC storage. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the operating system so we can see how this thing performs with Linux. All right, so here we are. I've got everything updated. We're running XUbuntu 20.04. I got all the latest Intel drivers installed and everything like that. But I want to give it that Twister OS look. So I'm going to be installing Twister UI. If you're not familiar with Twister OS, this is a great operating system for the Raspberry Pi. And now they're kind of bringing the look over to x86. They have an easy installer on their website. You're just going to download it and run it through Terminal. It'll take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes, depending on your internet connection, to get everything installed. But it's not just a look, it actually installs a lot of useful apps also. So I'm going to run this real quick. But remember, we're still going to be running XUbuntu 20.04 with the XFCE desktop. And once you have it installed, you have something that looks like this. And it's pretty snappy on the Rock Pi X. I definitely want to install this on a more powerful PC. Um, and I mean snappy by the interface itself, the operating system. Because I have to stress this again. I've said it in the last two videos I've done on the Rock Pi X. This is a four-year-old low-end chip. Even when it was released, it wasn't a very powerful chip. And four years later, it's still not a very powerful chip. But something like this could get you by with a Linux desktop operating system with the Twister OS theme installed. I mean, I love the look of this. We can also swap out the themes to kind of make it look like Mac OS. I'll do this by the end of the video. But really, we're here to see how Linux performs on the Rock Pi X. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First up, we're going to do some web browsing. So just open up Firefox. I also have Chrome installed and Chromium. And overall, for web browsing and email checking, all three of these do perform pretty much the same here. I haven't noticed any difference between them. We'll just head over to raspberrypi.org, something I usually test. As you can see, everything loads up pretty quickly. Uh, it's not as smooth as I have seen on different x86 CPUs, but overall, if you want to use something like this for web browsing or email checking, it will work out just fine. I mean, you shouldn't have any issues with something like that. But what about video playback or video streaming? We're going to head over to YouTube. Actually, I have a couple videos uh, already listed here that I'm going to try out. All right, so let's go ahead and hit play here. So we're at 1080p, and as you can see up here, it's actually a 24 FPS video. So we're not stressing it out with a 60 FPS 1080p video. And overall, with something like this, it does work quite well. 1080p 24, 1080p 30. But when you start moving up to 1080p 60, that's where this little chip starts struggling. And it's not the operating system or the browser that we're using here. It's really a limitation of this low-end CPU. Even with Windows, it struggled with 1080p 60 FPS playback. It was a bit better in Windows than it is on Linux, and I've tested it in all three browsers, Firefox, Chrome, and Chromium. But 1080p 30 or 24 is going to work just fine. And I would not even suggest something like this for 4K. And here we are with 1080p 60. So before the videos even kind of started here, we've already dropped close to 600 frames. It's very, very laggy. And we're not even full screen yet, as you can see. I mean, it hardly even plays it. So if I let it pause, we're going to let it buffer out just for a little longer. We already do have a little bit of buffer on it down here, so that's not the issue. Now that we've got a few seconds of buffer going, we'll hit play. And uh, it's just not great. As you can see, we're dropping basically as many frames as being played. So let's take it down to 720p. This will be 720p 60. And it works a lot better at 720p. We're still getting some drop frames, but overall, if you didn't have this on up here, you really wouldn't notice it. And like I mentioned, this is a limitation of the chip here, not the operating system and not the browser that we're using, because even if I go over to Chrome, performance is much worse. 
So basically streaming 1080p 60 video from YouTube is a no-go on this board and I also went through and tested Plex and performance wasn't great at all. Kind of performed just as well as it did with my Windows video which wasn't great. So now I wanted to go over and test some light image editing with GIMP and when I installed the Twister OS look it actually installed GIMP photo for me. We're going to load up a 4K photo here and I'm just going to test out a uh, color picker. This has to scan the whole photo for the exact color that I choose and then we can delete it from here and it's pretty snappy. So if you did want to do some light image editing on this board, it would work. But I wouldn't expect this thing to handle super large jobs with, let's say, more than 10 layers on them. I mean, something simple, yeah, it would work out just fine. But if you just want to do some light photo touch-ups, this will work out. Now it's time to move over to some gaming with Steam. And since this is an x86 board, all you need to do is install Steam from the website. Or you can do it from Terminal. Super easy to get up and running. And you can basically install anything you'd like from Steam, but will it run it or not? We're going to go with something older because I know this has a very low in GPU built in, and that's going to be Half-Life 2. We'll have the FPS listed in the top left hand corner, and by the way, when I tested this with Windows, I got an average of around 35 to 40 FPS out of it. So far it's not looking spectacular, and I am at 720p low settings, we'll go into the settings real quick and I'll just show you. Advanced options, right here. So we're at low, all the way across the board, and 720p. This is exactly how I ran it with Windows, and like I mentioned we got 35 to 40 with it. This one is sitting under 30, and in some cases it does drop as low as 15 FPS. Now we're going to move over to a little bit of Dreamcast emulation using ReDream. This is Crazy Taxi 2. FPS is up in the top left hand corner and we can't get this to run at full speed. Even some of the easier to run games run pretty bad on this. Like I said, this is ReDream. This is not the premium version, so we're at the native Dreamcast resolution. This is as low as we can go while rendering the game. Unfortunately, this Z8350 just doesn't have the juice. We're going to move over to one more. A relatively easy game to emulate with the Redream emulator, which is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And while it's a lot better than Crazy Taxi 2, you can see we're not at a constant 60. We do have those dips. Now I'd say the easier to emulate games are pretty playable, like this one here, but overall, it's not a great emulation platform either. Before we wrap this one up, I did want to give you a quick look at the theme twister. I thought this was really cool, and this is included with twister spins when you install it. You can install it with Xubuntu or Linux Mint. So we'll just go ahead and launch this, and as you can see, we have eight themes to choose from. We have Windows XP, Windows 95, Mac, Nighthawk, Windows 7, you can go with the Nighthawk Dark Edition. But we're going to check out the iRaspian theme, and this is going to make it look like Mac OS. So we'll just go ahead and choose the iRaspian theme. We'll have to put in our password, do a quick reboot, and we'll have that Mac OS X look. And it does work pretty decently on the Rock Pi X. I mean, like I mentioned, the operating system itself feels great, the theming feels great. It's just trying to run different applications and videos which struggles on the Rock Pi X. We'll go with one more here. We'll try Raspbian 7, which is a Windows 7 take. And if you're into that Windows 7 look, this will definitely be for you. We even have the little Windows icon at the bottom. It'll bring up all of our applications. And overall, I really love this idea. I mean, we have eight to choose from as it sits right now. Maybe down the road, they'll add more. So I'm going to come right out and say it. Personally, I wouldn't recommend picking up the Rock Pi X if you're looking to run a desktop operating system on it. Of course, it does run Windows better than the Raspberry Pi does because that's an ARM CPU. But when it comes down to it, the biggest issue with the Rock Pi X is the CPU. That Z8350 really never had great Linux support to begin with. And even four years later, at least in my experience, it's not much better. Now, if you did want to pick one of these up for a headless server, it would work out, but you can always get a cheaper Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model and use it in the same fashion. You'll be running an ARM-based operating system, but we do have two USB 3.0 ports on the Pi 4, as opposed to one on the Rock Pi X. So after all of my testing on the Rock Pi X, it's really hard for me to recommend this board for a desktop operating system, emulation, or gaming. And going into this, I knew that was kind of going to be the issue because I have tested a lot of Z8350 devices on my channel. And if you really want to pick something up with a Z8350 for some reason to run Windows on it, you can pick up a cheap mini PC on eBay and Amazon, spec'd out a little higher with more RAM and storage for around the same price or maybe $10 to $15 more, up to 100 bucks. 
but I personally wouldn't recommend it because the chip is getting really dated right now. If you really want a low-end Intel CPU and a mini PC, I would go with something like the N4100 or even the N4000, which is a dual-core CPU, but it does outperform the Intel Atom in every test that I've ever thrown at it. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.